So we want to talk about fertility, world population, and the importance of men staying healthy. What has pesticides got to do with this? What are scientists saying about how men's fertility rate is dropping? Uh, that's what we'll be looking at right now. And to help us discuss it, uh, we have uh, Dr. Newton Walter. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Doctor. Thank you for having me. All right, a little background here. Um, a professor um, in a recent report um, said, warned that continuous exposure of humans to pesticides can cause a low sperm count in men. And then, uh, but where I would want us to start this conversation, you'll come to that in a bit. He warned that evidence suggests that the human species is approaching a fertility crisis based on trends in male reproductive um, health, not just in Nigeria, but I saw a report that also said there are issues in America and uh, Europe. Uh, please, what are these trends um, that are necessitating this concern? Well, um, really, like you said, infertility is a problem all over the world. It's not just only in Nigeria. And uh, unfortunately, in our environment, when we talk about infertility, we are quick to only allude it to the woman, to the male, fa female factor. But the obvious fact remains that more than fifty percent of the cases is due to the male factor, and a lot of factors that can, can, can be attributable to these. Basically, the way we live our life these days: chemicals, alcohol and all the, uh, the toxins that we expose ourselves to. If you look at the WHO guideline, initially we used to say that normal sperm count is 20 million sperm uh, cells per meal. But that has reduced to about 15 million now, just because it is, it is a trend world over that the semen parameter of all men are reducing everywhere in the world. And that is something very, very alarming too. Okay. Let, let, let's talk about it for those of um, us here in Nigeria. Um, is it? Do we have similar fears and concerns? And uh, is there something specific, you know, that is also making it uh, the same or making it a problem should, here in should, Nigeria? I think it should shoot from the point of the pesticides warning. I don't know if you have seen the uh, report and the concerns around pesticide. We can start from there, and then you add the other uh, causes that worries you. Well, the, the issue of pesticides is there a lot of ongoing research as to what's are uh, contributing to the drop in male uh, fertility. And pest, pesticides, just like every other chemical, are very, very big uh, uh, causative uh, factors here yeah, in, in affecting male, male, male fertility. I, you can also agree with me that there's increased use of pesticides pesticide everywhere in the world now. The chemicals we use in, in the factory, and men are also involved in all these uh, factory, factory work. So these are also attributing to the fact that chemicals, not just only pest, pesticides, are involved in affecting, uh, uh, and the male, uh, in affecting male fertility. However, in our environment, you can also look at uh, some of the most, 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 most uh, most uh, important factors that affect male fertility are infections. Sometimes you have all these microtubes in the, in the testes are being blocked as a result of infection. So when this ejaculate don't come out from the testes, it can also lead to infertility. And of course, there's no doubt about that. When the sperm cannot meet the egg, it's a common cause of infertility. There's a barrier already. Therefore, infertility ensues. All right. I, I was uh, trying to bring it down to uh, the Nigerian perspective. You know, you, you're a male fertility doctor. Um, what are some of the things that you've also noticed with uh, men here in Nigeria? Um, and also, are there certain signs that uh, men should look out for uh, that might be warning signs for, you know, the future? Yes, obviously. Right, right from our childhood, you see, a, a common cause of male infertility is mom orchitis. When we develop mom at early childhood, and if not properly treated, it can affect our reproductive organ later in life. So these are our, our, our reproductive uh, um, ability 
starts right from our childhood. So these are all things that need to be protected from the beginning up to the time that we are, we, we are, we are getting pregnant. So infections can cause infertilities. Sometimes, because we, when you divide, when you, when you, when you, when you uh, want to look at the causes of male infertility, it starts from, even from our brain. From the brain, do have adequate hormones to produce test, to produce sperm, and you go down to the test it itself. Is it producing sperm? And after the test is, is this sperm that are being produced, are they, are they being able to move from where they are being produced and stored to coming out to be able to do its work outside? So it can be pre-testicular, it can be testicular itself, and it can be post-testicular. So these are all the places you look at when you are talking about uh, male fertility to be able to ascertain where the problem is actually coming from. Sometimes trauma can also affect our ability to, rep to reproduce. Trauma to the testes, it can also be trauma to the brain, which can also affect our, our, our sperm pr production. And in other, in other way, like I have said before, infection. A lot of people are reckless, having unprotected sexual intercourse. People are reckless. A lot of people smoke a lot of cigarettes and all sorts of uh, 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 smokes that people take these days, marijuana, all these things have been found to affect the ability to produce sperm. And you talk about, uh, you talk about the testing itself. Sometimes we are exposed to trauma. Sometimes we are exposed to unnecessary heat around the testes. And testes is, very, is, a, is an organ that is very, very sensitive to heat changes in the, in the body. And that is why naturally it is dropped out of the body so that the heat in the body doesn't really affect it. So people wearing tight, uh, tight uh, fitting, fitting underwears can also increase temperature around the testes and that can lead to defective sperm production. Do you advise men to sleep nude then? Come again? Would you advise men to sleep nude more often? Yeah. Yes, I do. All right. So I, 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 wanna, I want you to also quickly speak on, uh, you just mentioned about 50% of the infertility cases in Nigeria are, of course, uh, male-related. Um, there is obviously a Nigeria difference. Worldwide. Uh, worldwide. Okay. So there is obviously a difference between, and I want you to speak on the three of them, um, erectile dysfunction, um, poor uh, production of sperm and then um, poor motility of sperm because you know it's possible that you might be producing a lot but they're not swimming. So I, I want you to speak on you know the difference between these three and um, what may cause some of these things um, as quickly as possible. I was hoping that we could also you know okay. you know, shed light on signs. Um, are there things that a man can see in you know his body system that might point to you know you know likelihood of uh, uh, infertility? Maybe you know thickness of um, uh, sperm um, and things like that. Well, um, the looking at the sperm morphologically as it's been produced, we will be able to because I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of women coming in to tell me, oh, after having sexual intercourse, the, the, the sperm, the water flows out of the vagina. But that's totally not correct. Because the truth is that even the woman during sexual intercourse produces a lot of fluids, and this fluid will also come out from the vagina. So it's not totally, or once you are, the, once you are able to produce quality sperm and deposit it in the vagina, the sperm will find its way. And that is where erectile dysfunction comes in. Erectile dysfunction is not the same a cause of infertility. But in as much as you can be able to deposit that sperm in the vagina, the sperm will find its way. And the erectile what, what is what do erectile dysfunction mean? Inability to achieve adequate erection or sustain erection during sexual intercourse. So in whatever you are able to able you are, you are able to put in your sperm uh, your, your penis in the vagina and release that sperm, the sperm will do it work. So erectile dysfunction per se may not be a cause of infertility. However, it can lead to other sexual, not having a pleasurable sex and other factors that can go with it. But it may not necessarily cause infertility. All right. Then yeah. you talk about production of sperm. And we're, that's what we're also talking about, chemical, the effect of chemical on sperm production. It can affect the quantity of the sperm production or the sperm produced, and can also affect the morphology, that is the normal form of the sperm, and also the motility of the sperm. So all these infections, chemical, alcohol, cigarette smoking can affect not only morphology, not only the uh, production of sperm, but also the quality of the sperm. When we are talking about the quality of the sperm, we are talking about the ability of the sperm to swim, to meet that, uh, that is the motility. 
Motility is a very important factor in achieving pregnancy. If you have sperms that are not able to swim on their own, that means you won't be able to achieve, it won't be able to achieve a conception naturally on its own, unless you are able to assist with other one way or the other. Basically, during, a, during IVF. And it's very, very important to state that one of the, one of the uh, reasons for, uh, for IVF from the onset is as a result of male infertility. All right. Unfortunately, these days, we only look at male women when they're not able to achieve pregnancy, and we look at them as a cause of the disease. But like I said from the beginning, majority of the time, more than 50% of the cases Yeah, I, I guess the, 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 reason, the reason for that, um, um, some would say, has to be the has to do with the fact that it is the woman who is obviously pregnant. Uh, the man, it's, it, the, the, it doesn't have, he doesn't have any protruding stomach. So if the woman does not have a protruding stomach, they say something is wrong, wrong with, her. with her and um, it needs to be addressed. And uh, we're talking about the sex of a child. Um, there are concerns. I want you to speak on it. Is there any validity to claims that um, go back to the earlier conversation I, I, um, question I asked about pesticides, that this could, um, this has been shown to reduce um, the male births, that it seems that um, this is affecting the number of male uh, births that we have and giving advantage to the female uh, births. So I want you to speak, is there any validity to this claim that any of these male uh, fertility trends could make it uh, more likely for female birds. Not, uh, not, not that. That may not be totally correct. And I speak with you. I've not come across any scientific paper that have said something about any 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 uh, validated scientific uh, report that have uh, said something about this. However, you see, the research comes out every day, and they must go through proper validation for you to say that this is actually what the trend is. But if you look at the if you look at the world over, sometimes people say more female are being delivered is than male. But that's not correct. The the natural way of conception is still there. And irrespective of whatever it in the information are there that it's also equal uh, reproduction. Both male and female are also in equal uh, reproduction in equal belt every every day. So we don't have more female in, in uh, we are not giving more bed to female than male this, this time around. It's still on equal this day. Right. In terms of awareness, where are we? How aware are men that they need to pay attention to their reproductive health? Because we, 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 we like you have alluded separately, women seems to take the brunt. The focus seems to be on the women. Where are we with male awareness and what more needs to be done to get men to be more interested in preserving and protecting their fertility? Well, that's a very, very important uh, question you raised. And talking about awareness, what you are doing is also a very beautiful awareness uh, program. So we encourage you to do more of this. Unfortunately, most time when you see couple who have not been able to achieve pregnancy, you only see the woman majority of the time going to a hospital, looking out for solution. Meanwhile, the man is at home not doing any anything. And you see, one thing that is skewed against women is that women reproduction is totally affected by the age of the woman. And you find out that a woman who has been issued doesn't have any reason why she shouldn't be pregnant, but because of a male factor, we continue to grow older. And by the time she's getting uh, for, to, to get about 40 years and above 40 years, it becomes her problem. But all this why is as a result of her husband not being able to follow her to look for the solution, and they would have been able to achieve pregnancy earlier. So male factor is really a big problem, and therefore we encourage men at any point in time, and people, especially in our environment, not to, to look beyond the woman when they, whenever the case of inability to achieve pregnancy is, is there. Look beyond the woman and also look at the man, and you'll be able to, in the majority of the cases, to find the answer to the problem and also proffer an uh, immediate solution to right. not be able to achieve a conception. So awareness is very, very key. Unfortunately, majority of men are not aware that they think that it is the woman that needs to get pregnant, but it takes you to tango. It is only what you give the woman that the woman is going to accept for her to be able to achieve a pregnancy. So awareness needs to be created more on this aspect. Okay, Do Dr. Newton, I'm, I'm going to, uh, you know, get to... Let me bring up uh, some other parts. You know, you just uh, mentioned uh, 
uh, solutions, you know, and I, I want you to speak on possibility of uh, treatment, you know, in cases of uh, male infertility, you know, when it's a male factor infertility. But um, also, what is, you know, the need for regular checkups? Are there certain things that men may need to do at a certain age uh, to, you know, in a hospital? Some screening, some checkup, you know, just you know, to be sure that you are safe. Um, uh, that's uh, another question, and I think you can quickly speak on that one. Checkups, um, um, treatments, um, and the local idea that spam needs to be thick like Ogi. Uh, and if it's not like that, then, you know, it's um, useless. Do you agree with that? Or is that um, just a rumor? No. I uh, know it's totally not uh, not correct. Uh, sperm shouldn't be as thick as OD, because you also look at the viscosity. If this, if the, if the, if the, you see, there's difference between the sperm and the seminal fluid. Yes. What you see during the ejaculate is the seminal fluid. The seminal fluid contains the sperm and other other components of the of the seminal fluid. So what you see there, the thickness that water you see is the seminal fluid, which contain which is supposedly should have sperm, sperm cells inside it. But majority of time, you find out that in this ejaculate, there's totally no sperm at all. Sometimes there are sperm, but it's below the cutoff mark that you say you should have at least 15 million sperm per male. And sometimes you also see these sperms that they are not looking normal. And the other time you also see the sperm that they are not moving, that is immortality. Yeah. So these are all the things you look about. This, the, 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 the seminal fluid is different from the sperm. The sperm is a cell inside the seminal fluid. So the, the seminal fluid shouldn't be as thick as Ogi. Otherwise, it also prevents the swim ability of the sperm to swim and find its way yeah. into the service and the, therefore I just back to the priority to the point. But, but go ahead. Talk about regular checkups and uh, treatment for male infertility uh, issues. Well, fortunately for men, checking for a male, a male factor in infertility is very, very simple. All you need to do is to do the seminal fluid analysis. Unlike a woman who will go through all the series of investigation. And that is why most times it's really advised, let the man come in. You should check, analyze the sperm, look at how the sperm is looking at. If it's normal, then you can keep it there and focus on the woman. If it's abnormal, you start looking at what the problem is. Because it's simple to do a seminal fluid analysis. It's cheaper to assess the main factor of infertility that to, be, uh, that, that to start uh, uh, assessing that of females. So doing simple seminal fluid analysis will give you all information about the ability of the woman to uh, achieve a conception. And, this, and very, very importantly also to do the regular infection screening, gonorrhea and chlamydia. These are also very important diseases that can affect sperm, uh, uh, that can affect all those, dog, all those dogs in the testes that where the sperm flows and block it. And when it's blocked, the sperm cannot be able to come and during ejaculation. And that's also very important. So infection screening and simple seminal fluid analysis will help to assess a male ability to conceive. To achieve, a, to give a woman pregnancy. And treat, treat, talk about treatment. Is there, is there, you know, um, answers to these uh, challenges? Yeah, plenty, plenty answers to the challenges. It, it ranges from very simple, simple treatment uh, modalities to the more complex uh, uh, treatment like in vitro fertilization, the IVF and HC or whatever. But majority of time. The use of drug sometimes there's what we call varicose. Varicose can affect the quality of sperm uh, of the sperm production. It can also affect the amount of sperm being produced. So simple varicose electomy, which is done by the urologist, can also help to correct sperm uh, the abnormal sperm parameter. Where there are other things that with use of drugs sometimes the sperm uh, production corrects itself. And very very importantly, lifestyle life, lifestyle uh, uh, changes. Reduction of alcohol intake, stop cigarette smoking, change of work environment, and other things can also go a long way in helping restore the quality of the sperm. These are just very basic things that can be done. And majority of time, the treatment just relies on all these basic, simple solutions. Most time, it doesn't have to go to the high polluting uh, treatment modalities. Um, in your course of study, have you noticed that um, Nigerian men ignore um, STIs that don't have uh, very severe symptoms? And, you know, because, yeah. of course, they have ignored yeah. them for so long, it eventually leads to 
uh, dis- you know, so infertility. Or, infertility, yes. Yes, not only not only the Nigerian men too, but the women also. A lot of if you if you if you look at the statistics, especially in our environment, even though infertility is almost the same everywhere in the world, but factors changes from one environment. I mean, the causes change from one environment to the other. In our environment, the major cause of infertility, both in male and female, are due to sexually sexual infection, and this can cause a lot of damage in the reproductive system, thereby leading to infertility. And very very importantly, is the tuber blockage either in the woman or in the man. Okay, um, it, it's. Uh, it, a I just that have to let hours, you actually. both run with it because you are a male, you understand the issue a lot more. Uh, but uh, it's been uh, quite uh, educative uh, listening to you, Doctor. Thank you very much for joining us and sharing uh, your thoughts. Be, before we go, um, apologies. Before we go, I want to know about sperm banks in Nigeria. Do we have those, and you know how popular are they? Yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of sperm banks, and they're becoming, they're beginning to get very, very popular these days. And men are beginning to accept the use of donor. I've treated a lot of couples with the use of donor, donor sperm. So it's also, the awareness is also increasing these days. What is uh, the criteria for being a donor? Well, the sperm parameter must be normal. You must have assessed that sperm and make sure that the sperm parameters are normal. Also, that uh, the donor must also be, be free from sexual uh, infection. Therefore, there, 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 there are protocols for is a donor to fulfill before you can be able to donate. Initially, you have to do some tests and come back six months later to repeat those tests, and we know that you are totally free from infection before you can now go ahead to donate. You don't just come in and say you want to donate your sperm and we allow you to, to donate sperm. There are a lot of screening that needs to be involved. Is it, is it, is it, to donate. Do, do people get paid to donate? Well, you wouldn't call that payment. Well, we, don't, we don't say human beings or human garments. Yes, stipends, transportation allowance, those are the distance. But majority of time, people come because they are ready to help people who are in need of pregnancy. But you just give them some stipend, but you don't call that payment. But we don't say human garments. Okay. <laughs> okay, now let him go, right? <laughs> Thank okay. you again, Doctor, for I'll your be time. I'll you. Thank you, Doctor Newton. Um, Thank you. Yeah.